I caught up with the renowned sheepdog trainer and handler Con McGarry at the weekend and we got talking about a little thing there and unfortunately we ran out of storage so we had to cut it short we'll have to do a part two but it's quite interesting Con always interests me because I don't know he's probably 30 years at sheepdog trials and he always seems to be able to keep coming up with good dogs good competitive dogs and I don't know the vein never ran dry so I was kind of curious to know uh, how does he do it And so, under my con, some lads, they're always able to get, they're always able to put their hand on good dogs and they're able to consistently kind of keep coming up with dogs. And some lads then go off and they spend a lot of money on dogs and they still can't seem to get one. What's the, the important ingredient there, do you think? I, I, I'm not sure, Paddy, but uh, for a start, like, the dog has to suit you. The dog has to suit the, the person, the handler, whether it's a man or a woman, like. And uh, he'd have to be willing to work in the, in the way the person works. You'd have to be moulding it a bit into your own way of working. So there'd have to be a certain amount of giving him and, and a certain amount of taking him as well. Well, and I see you take, there. Put, yes. and, and, like, you're not limited to using your own breed of dogs. You go out and you see potential dogs somewhere and, and you pick them up or you buy them. Or how do you know, like, that's a lad that could suit me? Or, like, when you were looking at a very green dog, how do you know I think there's something I could do something with? Well, I don't know how I know. But it seems to work for me that I see things in dogs and uh, it's like other men sees things in horses. I see things in dogs and uh, I, I tend to go on that trait and it does seem to work for me. But it's difficult to know exactly to put your finger on exactly what it is. Well, like there's Dave now and I mean, Dave's a very consistent dog there and he's a danger any day in an open. And yet you bought him in an auction. And like you must not have had much of a look at him. Did you just see him out outside with a skit and around them places? You see him working a bit outside. I seen him working in the auction. I, I bought him a bit later, but uh, but uh, I didn't see uh, um, I didn't see much of him. But I I just liked I I liked the way he drifted off the sheep, and he was still had his head on them all the time, and uh, I, I just liked him. He was, he, I is, thought he was a nice type. Is that like? When he'd be flanking or something, that he'd be looking in and he'd have an eye on him all the time, or what do you mean? Yeah, well, he, 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 he the flanks, he, he wouldn't have been flanking that far off, but but uh, he, he'd be throwing his shoulder off and he'd still have his eye on the sheep. Yeah. He'd still have his eye on the sheep to balance them, to hold them. Yeah. He, he's a dog that, uh, um, he's the type of dog that hasn't to do much, but he, he, he always does enough. Yeah. You know, he's strange, like, uh, um, that, that's just him now. And then there's Merck, and like they're two different styles of dog, they're two different types, I'd consider them very different, and yet, uh, like I happen to know where you bought Merck, and sure, all you saw was a little bit of a two minute video. How, what could you see in a two minute video to say, I'll gamble that fella? Well, they, they are, yeah, they're very, very different, and, and you have to work them a little bit different as well. And that's why there has to be, I said, there has to be give and take. Like, I have to give a certain amount to the dog in that respect, and, uh, uh, have to work him different because he's he's a totally different type freer type of dog and he moves around freer but uh, he wouldn't have the same hold on his sheep as dave but he's very effective and he's he's very natural on his sheep and he has a great pace yeah but uh, when you saw that two minute clip of video though what caught your eye to think I'd, i'll chance that one or i'll have a go at him well well as you know i bought him he was in Ireland on a, on a small video and, and I was sitting on a bed in Germany when I bought him. So, but I, I, I just liked, I just liked his movements on the sheep on that yeah. little video. I liked his movements and, and then at that time he wasn't with an established trials handler. Yes. So I knew that the chances were that them little things he had was natural. Yeah, there was nothing really being heated yeah, or he, covered. He, wa he yeah. wasn't just, he wasn't just uh, fabricated into something. Yes. You know, the, the chances were that them things were there and that when you'd work on them a bit that they'd get better. Yeah. You said a very important thing there. Well, there's an awful lot in it and, and we won't get into it now, but do you think, see the way you said there, like your dogs are very different and you adjust your handling a bit to suit that and you have to compensate or you have to handle a bit different. Do you think some people are a bit limited in their handling they can only handle one type and then that means it's harder for them to get a dog that they like? I do and I've seen very good handlers back in the years with one dog and uh, and doing very well and they never could manage the same heights with, with a different dog no matter what one they got. They tried to mould it too much into what the first dog was and and that dog wouldn't wouldn't give to that. He was a different type of dog. 